second video we're going to record for F583 exam essays. This is the exam pack I'm working from. I made a little bit of an edit here to uh, give you some guidance about what you can expect if you were to download this pack and how I'm going to work through it. So I've separated it into three sections. The first one is based on market structure and competitive behavior. The first video you should have seen is the one I've highlighted here. And the rest of these are bold and I have some essays included in this pack uh, that will address these essay prompts. And I didn't cover the ones below, uh, but these are just for your reference. So these are ones you can practice. The second section is labor demand supply and wage determination. And I'm going to answer this essay, discuss the extent to which wage differentials are a result of differences in elasticity of supply. And in section two, all of these essays in bold are the ones that will be in the pack. And then these non bold prompts are not in the PDF. So let me go ahead and jump to the section we are going to be looking at to discuss the extent to which wage. All right, so we're at the essay and I'm going to read this. It's out of 20 marks. The one I did previously was 15 marks. So let's just jump right into it. The, the introduction paragraph should define the key terms, wage differentials, and potentially address elasticity of, of supply. So let's see what happens. Wage differentials are differences in wages, such as that between doctors, teachers, footballers, and cleaners. Wage differentials occur between occupations, industries, firms, regions, and within these categories. The elasticity of supply of labor is the responsiveness of the supply of labor to a change in the wage rate. It is argued that this has a significant effect on wage differentials. I like this introduction, gives me the key concepts, and lets me know that it's been argued that it has a significant effect, but let's see what it is. The elasticity of supply could be seen as a most important factor influencing a worker's wage rate. When the elasticity of supply is inelastic for a certain occupation, for example, for brain surgeons, this results in a higher wage rate. If wages were to increase for doctors, people cannot become doctors straight away as a doctorate degree is needed, intensive training and specific skills, and therefore the quantity supplied of workers does not increase dramatically. People who have the degree, such as biomedical degree, may choose to specialize and become a doctor because they are attracted by these high wages, but most important, won't take time to become a doctor. Um, let's see, however, majority of the population lack these skills and cannot change their occupation, which makes them occupationally immobile. So this is good. It's saying why is supply of why is the supply of doctors inelastic, right? Because of their high level of skill, it takes a long time. So yes, that's a large factor in determining their wages. So we're looking at the extent to which wage differentials are results in differences. So let's keep going. Wages are obviously high when the demand is high and inelastic for an occupation, such as accountants and surgeons, and where supply is low and inelastic. Uh, demand is high for surgeons as they are a vital part of operating team and do not have a viable substitute. Plus, the marginal revenue product of labor of surgeons is very high in comparison to cleaners, for example. The best examples are dentists. They are greatly demanded by private firms. In the NHS, however, we have a shortage in supply of dentists. Therefore, the available dentists in the UK get paid a significant amount. In contrast, wages are likely to be low where supply is high relative to demand, and both demand and supply are elastic. We can take the example of waitresses where supply is so high. This job requires no qualifications and a minimum of training. As there are a large number of people capable of doing the job and a rise in the, minimum, and the rise in the wage rate will attract an extension in supply. The marginal revenue of product of waitresses are low and also demand is low. And so demand is low. I believe the most important fact influencing workers' wage rate is a difference between skilled and unskilled workers that we saw in the example before. Being skilled and unskilled leads to different elasticity of supply and therefore significant wage differentials between occupations. When workers have a large degree of human capital in forms of qualifications, degrees, they tend to produce a higher output, therefore are in higher demand by firms. Also, it is, it is important to consider the substitutes for that type of labor. Firms can replace workers with machinery, such as production line jobs. If wages rise too much, firms will cut back on how many workers they employ and will turn to, vi to viable substitutes. Surgeons, however, do not have any substitutes, and their value in society leads them to earning much higher than waitresses, which can be seen as a less well-respected position in society. So what they're saying here is that, well, you also have to look at why is the, um, you know, the skills play a role, but also the substitutability plays a role. So this is also going further in that elasticity of supply analysis. So I want to change this here. 
Uh, let's see. Difference between skills. So there should be some... This is kind of touching on where I wanted to go. It, it should start to analyze um, demand as well. So we can see that in a moment. But let's keep going and see what happens next. An alternate reason that accounts for wage differentials is the presence of trade unions in different professions, right? So now this is actually saying that the trade unions have a bigger impact and might have an influence on uh, on the market. A strong trade union such as the British Medical Association has large funds and a close relationship has been built up with the government health ministers. Any industrial action it may take would have a substantial effect as all doctors cannot be replaced by machines and equipment. So the trade union has a powerful wages to be put up from P1 to P2 as shown on the diagram. Consequently, the trade unions have increased wages. Therefore, there will be larger there will be a larger wage differential between doctors and other occupational industry. In industries with stronger trade unions, their wages are likely to be higher than industries with less militant trade unions, or we could say less aggressive trade unions, or with no well, let's say less powerful trade unions, or with no trade union at all. For example, teachers' wages could be higher. Then cleaners, as teachers, trade unions have much more power, many more members, and trade unions for cleaners. This results in wage differentials between different professions. All right, so let's keep going. This is, you know, pretty thorough. So take a look at the diagram. Is it? It's giving me the uh, the argument for the the trade union setting the minimum wage, or not necessarily the minimum wage, but the above market equilibrium wage rate. What impact that will have? Although the extent to which bargaining power is a significant influence on wage differentials is dependent upon how strong the unions are, which is influenced by the membership and financial resources of the union. Also in the private sector, only a few are part of a union, so it's not considered such a significant factor in causing wage differentials in the private sector. So here's some kind of evaluation about looking at the strength of trade unions, their effect on wage differentials, and as well looking at um, the the uh, the private sector so it's it's pretty cool because they're taking a look at they're saying this doesn't apply equally across all industry if you look at the private sector trade unions are, are not as powerful in addition public opinion has an effect on wage differentials jobs that the public deem worthy and respectable are more likely to have higher wages than jobs which the public do not regard so highly an example is with refuge collectors it is not a job that the public respect highly as opposed to being a head teacher which the public deem a worthy and challenging role that is necessary for schools to prosper and in order to provide a good education to members of our society, this makes head teachers more likely to have a higher wage and refuge collectors, causing wage differentials. However, this is dependent upon whether the employer takes into account the public's opinion when deciding how much to pay workers, such as even though the government may understand that the public view, let me fix this here, the public view nurses with great respect for the work they do, they may not have the financial reserves. Hold on, let me see. All ah, right. This is dependent upon whether the employer takes into account the public's opinion when deciding how much to pay workers. For example, the government may understand the public view nurses with that the public view nurses with great respect for the work they do. They may not have the financial reserves to pay the nurses more for having a positive image in the public's eye. Therefore, public opinion does not always have an effect on wage differentials. So this is analysis of public opinion. In addition, even though the public do not regard investment bankers highly in light of the economic crisis, they are still paid very high salaries. And being paid much more than nurses show that the level of public regard for jobs does not always cause differences in wage differences in wages between different occupations. Lastly, a key cause of differences in wages is the effect of discrimination. Men still earn more than women, and there are still cases where they are in the same role but with different salaries. Ethnic minorities, are, ethnic minorities are also on average paid less than white workers. And one of the reasons why this occurs is that employers discriminate against them for unjustified reasons. Hence, this causes them to be paid less. This causes wage differentials between different workers in the same occupation, although the extent to which, evaluation point, wage differentials are a result of discrimination is dependent upon government legislation. The past few decades have seen several anti-discrimination laws resulting in less people being discriminated against, so wage differentials are not caused by discrimination as much in the modern day, however, it does still have an influence. So we're we now have looked at quite a lot. So let's see the, and there's been some evaluation throughout. On balance, despite discrimination, public opinion and trade union strength and bargaining power all having an effect on wage differentials, the elasticity of supply remains of labor remains to be the most influential factor causing wage differentials. However, this is dependent on the elasticity of demand for labor. Now, 
This is a well-written essay containing all the key elements of a level 4 answer. It is pushed to from 4B to 4A by being well-balanced and fluent. There is strong evaluation throughout. So it, you know if you're looking here, you're seeing a short evaluation. You're thinking like, well, wait a minute. Like, How did this person get high L4 marks? You have to consider the fact that there's been evaluation going on throughout. If you try to find the phrase, the extent to which throughout, right? the extent to which this thing matters is based upon or the extent to which this thing impacts our decision. The more you see that throughout the essay, the more that you are going to recognize evaluation has been going on throughout. So this is why this final section can be brief. I would argue a little bit too brief, but um, I think there is still strong evaluation throughout, and the final judgment is supported by previous discussion. Dry diagrams are relevant. I'd explain in context of the essay question. For full marks, I would say the evaluation should have included a ranking. Of the, of the factors. Because if you're saying like, yes, elasticity of supply is the most influential, but you haven't told me how far discrimination, public opinion, trade union strength, and bargaining power, you know, how much do they play? Which one is the strongest out of that? So I would give this an 18 out of 20 and say it needs to improve by further evaluation. And by further evaluation, I mean rank the factors. So first, you may agree that elasticity of supply is the most influ influential factor. What's the second, third, and fourth?